Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? What have I come to accomplish, if anything? One man, one person, one life, but it's not there. Look at the desire, go in your heart, touch bases with the desire that you have to serve, to be the fullness of whatever it is you are. Touch bases with the strength of that. Now consider not one life, many, many, many lives. Where that has grown and developed where that grows and develops now for all time is simultaneous. Especially if you have some years about you in this life, consider all that you've learned, all the trials and troubles you've been through, and what they have honed in you, the study you've done, where you were able to benefit from the living of others, their writings, their teachings, and what you have come to from your own experiences. Now multiply that by those many, many, many lives. It's significant. It's intense. There's no smile in it for its intensity. It's, it's a fire. Now consider all time is one. All time is now. Every experience of this lifetime, all experiences of all lifetimes, are happening now, in this moment. And you have access to that because it's all you. What is an I? Who am I? What am I? I know for a fact I've been more things than just human. And so you, you bring the broader brush in to color it with. What we learn in the other forms of consciousness, the different force of the culture even of the biology there. We've lived in other dimensions as well. We've lived as beings that we wouldn't even now recognize as beings if we could even see them. Maybe more like symbols and things. 
forces. Time is nothing like what we in 3D have imagined it to be, which isn't to say that's meaningless. Nothing is, and everything is. It has meaning, as long as it does, and then it doesn't anymore. Not in the old way. And we're losing time now. It's fading away. And so it's probably a good time to have a meditation on that. What is an I? Who is an I? How is it that we have isolated our consciousness this way? to participate here. Well, it doesn't matter how. It's an is. So, in one sense, it just needs to be accepted. But that doesn't mean we can't connect up with more of the fullness of who and what we are. We're also quite connected, even though appearances belie this. We're one in the heart, and we've had plenty of those who traveled the frontier come back and report to us the experience of the oneness. Pretty much everyone who has a near-death experience comes back to tell us of this. All is one. We're so blessed. We have the image of the fractal. And we see how change propagates through that. How beautifully this fits in with the teaching that the maxim as above, so below as below, so above. We're moving more into a realm of symbols and math and relationships. It's different. It contains more information somehow without it all being linear and needing to be read like a book from the front to the back, depending on where you're from, the back to the front, up to down, left to right, sideways. It's all relative. Just like we had our DNA snipped, short-circuited. We were given all these languages. We were all one. We had no need to speak this way once upon a time. I think seeing the way the Andromedans operate through Alex Collier's lectures and their total telepathy we see that in action. We see how it functions. What is a person? I'm sure many of us are Andromedans. Are we there when we're here? We obviously have, obviously to me, everybody has to come to their own understanding. 
in my understanding, we obviously have multiple incarnations we're living at once. To me, that's the only sensible understanding of time being simultaneous and me having a lot of lifetimes. So they're all happening now. That being the case, right this moment, I'm wearing many other awarenesses, bodies, minds, consciousnesses. And yet they're all one. As above, so below. As below, so above. It makes you wonder what's to stop some of them from being simultaneous with each other. We have some really or linear understandings of time travels. 